God, our Heavenly Father, we are His heir, and that we are joint heirs with Christ, with His Son, meaning everything that Jesus has, we have as well too. Everything. It doesn't say like a business partnership where it's 50-50. <laughs> you know, it's like you get 50%, you get 50%. No, it's joint. It's like a marriage. It's like when you and I get married, everything we have is joint. It's one. The good, bad, and the ugly, you get it all. <laughs> uh, here we go. We're going to start a marriage <laughs> conference now. <laughs> there fair weathered friends <laughs> oh, we're starting off good already <laughs> welcome to the abundant life where my fabulous husband who teaches the Word of God is going to bring us some new revelation today I'm very excited about because I have no idea what this is today <laughs> uh, Charles Todd Angela Todd we're just filled up and ready to let it loose. So go ahead, babe, what do we- Bringing you the good news on how to live the abundant life. That's what the show's all about, right? The abundant life. So we're well, constantly talking about various things that we are promised in the word that we can have to live the abundant life. And so, we will not exhaust that subject, We will ever. not, we keep going, we keep going. So today we're talking about how humility makes you rich. Ooh, there's so many like undertones with that and just being broke. You're supposed to be humble by being broke and there's, what is that like? To me, it's like an old wives tale, it's just well, nonsense. Basically, that's what we're gonna talk about. So go ahead and kick us off with, cause I wanna start with a scripture and set the foundation on this because I don't want this to be like my opinion or your opinion or what we've experienced in our life. I wanna set it up. We always go based off of the Word of God right. and how it's so go ahead and let's get the foundation because I know some people out there right now going look good <laughs> you just wait okay Proverbs 22 4 and LT true humility and fear of the Lord lead to riches honor and long life so I love the NLT because it starts off true humility okay this doesn't say just humility and what does humility lead to riches number one honor and long life, right. right? So if you're truly humble, then the Bible says you're gonna have riches and you're gonna be honored and you're gonna have a long life. So what I like about this is that true part is that you can reverse this and flip this. So you could say false humility leads to poverty, disgrace, and a short life. Cause that would be the opposite of what this is saying, right? Mm -hmm. So I think what happens a lot of times people think, Oh, you know, that person is so humble. He, you know, he just has enough to get by. He's, you know, just drives a small, simple car. He lives in a little one bedroom house. And if that's what that person desires, then great. But if that person as is using that to show that they're humble, then that's not true humility. Let me give you an example. So most of the time we'll think about people being prideful that are rich, right? Like you think of a celebrity or you think of somebody who's got a lot of money and they will be rude, they'll be arrogant. And so when I looked up the definition of humility, it says freedom from pride and arrogance. So when you're truly humble, you're gonna be free from that, which means you're not gonna express pride, you're not gonna be arrogant, you're not gonna be some jackass, you know, yell at other people because they don't have as much money, but that's kind of what the worldly perception is. You know, even within Hollywood and politics, we try to make wealthy people look bad. We don't, they do sometimes. And I read a very interesting, uh, I'm reading a book right now by a Jewish rabbi and he was saying that, research that he did that 70% of Hollywood movies, the bad guy is a businessman. Huh, not a bank robber, not a murderer. They set businessmen up to look bad. And what do some of the politicians do? They wanna make businessmen or rich people look bad. Let's, let's you know, tax the rich or whatever it may be. So. We have this false perception sometimes that rich people are arrogant and bad, and there are, there are that. You're gonna have bad apples in every bunch. You've got bad attorneys, you've got bad lawyers, you've got bad teachers, you've got bad doc, you've got bad everybody, but we don't judge the whole group of people or the whole industry based on one bad person. So let me give you an example of a prideful rich person. I'm a self-made millionaire and I did it all on my own and all this I did, I created and everything, this is my kingdom, I did it. It's prideful, because what is he doing? He's focusing on self, I, 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 I. So 
Let me give you an example of somebody who doesn't have riches that also is operating in that same pride or arrogance. I just have enough just to get by for myself and I just have a one bedroom apartment because that's all I need and I drive this old car because I just need to get to from point A to point B. What is I, 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 it's the same thing. It's just opposite. So it's not the money, it's the person, it's the relationship. Just like First Timothy said, it's the love of money that's the root of all evil. It's not money in and of itself. And we're going to do a teaching that teaches how money is actual spiritual. That's a whole different thing. I won't get off there. But it's the wrong relationship with money is then what makes evil. Because people put their money before they put God. So we've taught for years now that God is our source. You always put God number one. And that's the most important thing with understanding is humility is true humility is getting your attention off of yourself and putting your attention onto Christ, period. Knowing that all things, all good things come from him and he will give you those abilities to then go out and to do all those things to create wealth, to create the ability to be a blessing like Genesis 12 and 2 says, blessed to be a blessing, to be able to bless others. But at the same point, we don't want to take on that worldly perception of being broke or not having enough as being humble because that's not the case. It's about getting your attention off of yourself and putting your attention on Jesus. Amen. You don't need to say anything more. So go ahead and read 1 John 4, 17, because I want to get some more biblical input here just to prove this point even more. 1 John 4, 17, New King James Version. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. Okay, so who is He in this? Who is who referring to as the He? Christ. Christ. So it says, as Christ is, so are we in this world right so how is Christ right now is Christ broke is Christ sick is Christ worried about sickness and disease does Christ have anxiety and stress and all the worries of famine and viruses and world war and all that does he have any of that going on no no so as he is so are we where not when we go to heaven so are we in this world so as Christ is right now, if you're a believer, you've accepted Jesus Christ, you are the same as he is right now. That means you don't need to have poverty, you don't need to have sickness and disease, you don't need to have anxiety and stress, you don't need to have any of that stuff. Because as he is, so are you in this world. So getting the attention, once again, off of yourself and who you are in Christ is part of being humble. It's part about true humility. It's like just flipping a switch just shutting down the worldly perspective, which is not so easy to do with all the social media that we're bombarded with every day. And like we had said before, just look at your phone. Immediately your mind will start racing into a tailspin of all these things. But again, Christ says, you know, and I have redeemed you. So Galatians 13, 3.13, redeem you from the curse of the law, having right. become a curse for you. because. Right curses every man that hangs on the tree, that the blessings might come upon you through the spirit of faith. So once again, it's that exchange. Right. It's the exchange at the cross. He took our poverty. He gives us riches. He takes our sickness and disease. We have health and wholeness. He takes all the stress and anxiety so that we'd have peace and wholeness. So it's the exchange and it's the same thing within this form of humility is that it's an exchange, you know, and then you are then giving the glory. So. Somebody comes to you, have a beautiful brand new house. Somebody comes in and one guy, yeah, you know, I worked so hard the last two years to do this and I saved all my money and I did all this. And I'm not saying that that's not what you need to do even when you're being humble. You still have to go through those principles of working and saving and all those different types of things. But the point is, is that we're not putting the attention on that. You know, look, look what God has done. <laughs> you know, once again, it's like, you know where your blessing comes from. You know where your peace comes from. You know where your protection comes from. And when people see that, that gives you a chance to give him glory. Because that's what the whole thing about. It's like, I mean, our testimony through everything we've done is all about giving glory to God, <laughs> period. Because we tried it on our own and we didn't do it. Right. We went through bankruptcy, we went through divorce, we, went through we couldn't do it on our own, no matter how hard we tried. But once we brought Christ into the center of our business, of our marriage, everything else, 
we started living the abundant life. And it's a process, it's a building, and it gets better all the time, but you gotta start somewhere, <laughs> you know? And you gotta start believing what the Word of God says that it's Him that's done this for you. It's Him is the reason why, as He is, you are in this world. And I think being humble is just looking at Him in the Word because you see you. It's like you looking into the mirror when you're focusing on Him. And the humble response to just taking your mind off of man and putting your mind onto God, you don't know how He's going to do it. He has Never. <laughs> so many different ways to play out the dreams and desires in your heart if you will just look to Him and not man. And sometimes that's hard to do, even for married couples, to be looking at their husband as their God or their support. Yeah, or provider, protector. Member. Yeah, or the government or a lender or whatever the case that's is, good. which are great bridges, but like we had said before, it's not your ultimate destination. A true humble response is what, like, thank you? Is looking at the Lord and just saying thank you. And in that humble response, He will then bring to you things. At that point, you will have the opportunity to not puff yourself up and say, I did this, like you were just saying, because your humble response to Him, He then bring it, it's like a, it's a magnet. It's like when they raised up the snake and all the people were healed. Did they have to like do anything? Did they have to change who they were? Did just they have to do anything? They just had to look. All they had to do was look. Yeah, and believe. Well, to look is to believe. Yeah, because they're told to look. They were told <laughs> That's to what look. they did. They so, believe. Okay, if I look, those, I'll be healed. Yeah, and those <laughs> who looked, and that was a humble response. Because to not look is to say, oh, well, that's not going to work and that's pride. That or... Yeah, I don't need that. That's yeah. too easy. I can't just look because then what? Where is my part? And all that you say we can, that all that you say we can do, and then what happened? 3,000 people died. And that was at the foot of the mountain when Moses came down. Anyway, I know that's a whole other thing, but <sighs> true humility. It's just look. All right, so go ahead and read uh, Romans 8, 17, our next scripture for us, please. Romans 8, 17, New King James Version. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So what's great about this is it's talking about heirs, saying that we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. So if you have like a family member or a grandparent, a parent or something, and they die and you are the heir to their inheritance, what do you get? Everything they had. Everything, every, all their earthly wealth. If you're the beneficiary of that inheritance, you get everything they had. So this is basically saying that we are the heir of God. <laughs> God, our Heavenly Father, we are His heir, and that we are joint heirs with Christ, with His Son, meaning everything that Jesus has, we have as well too. Everything doesn't say like a business partnership where it's 50-50. <laughs> you know, it's like you get 50%, you get 50%. No, it's joint. It's like a marriage. It's like when you and I get married, everything we have is joint. It's one. The good, bad, and the ugly, you get it all. <laughs> uh, here we go. We're going to start a marriage <laughs> conference now. <laughs> That's next. But you inherit it all. Yeah. But thank God we inherit all the goodness God. <laughs> of God and of Jesus, right. of this joint heir. So once again, everything that we're getting is coming from him. So um, one thing that I always remember that jo Joseph Prince says, is like, you know, when you're teaching grace, people say, oh, you're just giving people a license to sin. And his response always is, when you believe right, you're gonna act right. So it's the same thing. The, the last point I wanna make regarding this is that when you understand where all of your stuff comes from or anything that you have whether it's physically financially or spiritually it's coming from Christ you didn't have anything to do it but when you believe right and you receive it when you're receiving the goodness of God when you're receiving the healing of God it is truly gonna make you humble because you know you received it as a gift it's the gift of righteousness you receive it as as grace and favor and when you receive that it's just a there's an inward transformation that's gonna make you humble and then when you're in that humble state, 
this stuff really doesn't have as much importance as it did anymore. You're able to give it away. You're able to give money away. Yeah, you're able to give true. cars away. You're able to give how anything that yeah. you have, you're able just to get rid of it because it's not, I work so hard and I, cause when you do that, then you're like, give me all this stuff and then yeah, I'm going to keep it. You know, when it's freely given to you, you freely give, it's like this, you receive from God into your hands and then you can freely release it back out. And that's where you can operate in that true humility. And that's the love of God. The love of God. When that love comes God. on you, mm, that's the humble response. Thank you. That's the humble. Isn't it easy? So easy. So simple and easy. So, so don't let the world's perspectives or the world's ways, don't let them try to fool you and trick you because the evil one out there is like a Roy line trying to convince us of the worldly way. So we need to focus on the word of God. And it's like you're saying, you can get so distracted from the social media and all the other things. What do you do? Turn that stuff on. Turn this stuff on. Turn that stuff off. Turn or I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> turn off the social media. Turn off the news. You know, it's okay to watch that stuff. It's okay to do that stuff. I'm not trying to say it's not, but limit that amount and then make sure you're getting this amount and make sure you're tuning into messages like this. Listen to other pastors. Go to our website. See all the mentors that we have. There's just an abundance of information out there. So use it. Amen. True humility. True Riches humility. and honor and, and long, long life. life. And that is thank you and walking in the love of God. Hey. How good is that? Yes. So good. So until next time, remember you can go to our website. You can see we got all of our Money Mike books out. Check that out on Amazon. All the other things we have going on. What else? You're the marketing and advertising piece here. Just some fun things on the horizon. So just uh, stay tuned. And oh, we are on the local now Christian Life television network. You can also go to our website and go to Local Now. They have awesome programming, uh, different channels. Uh, it's all free television. So uh, that's an exciting thing on the horizon. So okay. check there it out. I told you she knew what was going on. She knows all that. <laughs> Until next time, remember, Jesus came so that you would have life in abundance. Amen. Peace.